So, the cancelled, my air appointment got cancelled and, and I'm fucking at the end of my wits end with it, so it's coming off. Better. More manageable and sensible. So yeah, alright. See you in the next clip. So it's Monday, half four. Check it out. That's what we got on there. 12 course. Run out of telescopes, so I've got to left that one out. That corner's more or less up. That corner's more or less up. 10 11 course in the morning. Nice uh, nice day considering we're a flat start. I've got some gear loaded. Right, see you in the next clip. This week I'm just going to do little check ins after the day. Um, yeah, building corners went well. Um, I probably prefer it to using profiles if I'm going to struggle to get them on. Those concrete bricks tend to move and stuff with the profiles. Building the corner, you can sort of build like a 12 course corner. Six out one side, six around the back. Knock out building your back uh, and your front at both sides, and then running a load of meat, and it can all be going off. And then drop back and build some more corners and do it again. Um, I'd say, I'd say it's probably as fast as using profiles. I used to do the big corners all the way up. Didn't really work very well. You know, there's too much too much meat condensed in one area, and it tend to sag with the concrete bricks. But well, these yellows are definitely better for picking and dipping. Um, they don't sink as much, just because I'm probably on uh, silo gear, which makes a big difference. And yeah, I've enjoyed doing the corners today. I was because I was solo. Um, it was ideal. We run out of telescopes for the um, for the air bricks to shuttle the air down underneath. Uh, so I had to rack back in the, right at the end of my gable. I had to rack back. Um, because I one short, I was one short on the gable. I could get around the back. I could get down the gable in the front, but I just was one one short. So I've got to go to a job in the morning on the way to site, which is sort of on the way. It's actually closer than the site. It's, a, it's actually closer than the site I'm working at to pick some up um, for me and the gang next to me. Moving over to the other one and building some more corners. So yeah. Um, Oh yeah, and there's and there's a there's measurements on the drawings now for the meter boxes, so I can't get them wrong, uh, like I did before. I got four plots wrong on the last site, um, so yeah, live and learn, I suppose. Right, let's see in the next clip. Hey guys, before I start the video, uh, just address a few comments from the last few videos about Mel. I'll not stand for any comments about her in the videos, you know, you'll be instantly blocked. You know, um, you don't know the situation we we live in, you don't know the, uh, you know, the situation that Mel, what Mel does every day, you know. She's up most of the night, seven nights a week with Archer, he doesn't sleep, she comes to work and helps me out when she doesn't have to, and, uh, you know. It's fucking terrible, some of the comments that get put in the comment section. I know it's YouTube, I know you're going to get trolls, you know, uh, but you're just going to be blocked if we leave any comments. It's uh, disgusting uh, disgusting etiquette in the comments, you know. I try to keep a friendly, fam sort of, uh, a friendly small community with the YouTube videos, uh, so I'll probably not be featuring her in any future videos if uh, we're going to get you know, uh, disgruntled, fucking disgusting comments in the uh, comment section. So I'll uh, I'll carry on with the video. But you know, if you do like my videos and you find yourself blocked because you've left a stupid comment, you know, unlucky. I'll not unblock you. Right, let's carry on with the video. Hey guys, Harry here, back with another Brit Lane vlog. Um, I was gonna do just voiceovers after every. Um, every day, you know, just a bit of vlog style, but I thought I'd do the voiceover thing <coughs> So I didn't have like, you know, 30 minutes of time lapse <coughs> This is over Monday and Tuesday You saw at the beginning, obviously um, I did that that far side freehand, I was solo Monday um, You know, days when I'm solo, days when I'm not solo, it's just whenever Mel feels like, you know She's had a good night's sleep, if Archer's had a good night uh, and stuff like that, so, you know, it suits me, um, and as well, you know, that's why I'm building corners as well, you know, a lot of guys, 
you know, I'll see my last video where I said I'm doing it freehand and basically automatically I think I'm going to get less done. Um, but sometimes that's not that's not the case at all, you know. Um, corners can be quick uh, and profiles can be quicker in a certain situation if you get in there early so you can set them up. If you're getting stuff loaded out in front, you know, you've got big long runs to go at. You've got a labourer constantly feeding your mortar um, and then looking after your boards, making sure they don't go dry, stuff like this. Um, but obviously me and Mel, you know, we're not like a traditional one-on-one. -on -one. Mel's not like a, a full-fledged, full-time labourer. You know, she's here to help me up, uh, help me point up. Uh, well, she does all the pointing, basically. Um, you know, refill the boards, you know, and load a bit of gear out with me. You know, she don't load out in front too much which I don't expect her to, uh, we just do everything as a team and I used to do this sort of tech, this is what I used to do with apprentices years, you know, a couple of years ago when I had a, had a, uh, had a couple of apprentices working with me um, you know, we'd do everything as a team, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't believe in sort of using them as a labourer and that's basically what I'm doing with Mel, Mel's almost an apprentice and I'll cover at the end of the video why um, in a bit of a vlog that I did at the end of, t uh, end of this day and why I've stuck with just Mel at the moment and not gone back to getting another labourer. Um, you know, massive reason is because I can't find a good labourer um, and I can't find a labourer that will stick. I'm not bothered about having someone come for a month. It's a waste of time to me. It's a waste of my mental effort to teach someone, especially when a lot of the time they don't have a lot of experience so you've got to show them how you want everything doing. And um, in winter, we lose a lot of time, whether it's through... You know, we're in winter now. It's a very mild winter, bear in mind. But we lose time with <coughs> materials. <coughs> Either materials being too wet, or we're not having the right stuff on site, or with silo refills, uh, which is obviously more prevalent because of COVID, and weather. Rainy days, frosty days, windy days like this week. It was probably, that's probably the heaviest winds I've, I can remember in a long time. <coughs> Today. So, you know, and then I'm having to still work on those days, try and work, try pay a labourer, and then they're losing time, they're unhappy, they're wanting to fucking jack, and I'm earning less money, whereas with Mel, if I know it's going to be raining one day, and I know there's a high chance it's going to rain, I'll tell her to stay at home, I'll do half a day solo, and I'll still earn a good crust for my, my efforts of that day, whereas, you know... You know, if you've got a labourer with you full time, you know, a lot of guys don't want to admit this, uh, and a lot, so I, a lot of guys don't go as a one-on-one -on -one is because there's a lot of time you're not going to be getting the volumes and you're not going to be covering wages. You're going to be earning the same as the labourer. I've had that, I had that before when I was working with Mel and Dean. I was working for the same as them. I was on a hundred a day. They were on a hundred a day each, and, we were, and there was only enough fucking work on some of the days to cover, you know, cover just their them their two wages. And I was basically we were all on equal split. And that's what happens when you haven't got the work in front of you, you haven't got everything perfect. And at the moment, you know, with, um, you know, we've been on these concrete bricks and, and uh, you know, sometimes stuff not always, you know, um, don't always go as smooth. But, you know, in winter, there's a lot of things that can throw a spanner in the works. You know, it's easier me having this flexible working with Mel. Just I make more money, I'm less stressed, it's relaxed. And that's the way I'm doing it at the moment. I'm not saying I'm always going to be me and Mel. You know, I might get a, a labour at some point, but um, you know, we're gonna we're gonna you know, I said to Mel, I'm gonna do a year with just me and you, uh, or you know, at least eight nine months, and just you know, see it through the season, see how it all works out, and uh, you know, see what I earn because I'm all you know, I only come to work to to make money. We won't do this for free, and if I'm making more money working with Mel, I'm gonna stick doing that, uh, and I can work a little bit more. You know, I can st steady down a bit. Like I made the mistake with the meter boxes, which I told you guys again on the other video. I made a mistake with meter boxes, which a little bit my fault, a little bit the drawings being unclear. Um, and you know, uh, you know, so if I want, if I wasn't trying to cover two wages, I maybe I would have queried that more and said, you know, is there an actual measurement for this? Is you know, before I even started. Uh, but instead I was just like, oh, I get it up, yeah, follow this, this, this and that, you know, I went with my instinct and got it wrong, where when you're a one-on-one, -on -one, when there's just one here, uh, to one wage to pay, you could take your time a little bit more, you can just, you know, you ask a few questions, make sure everything's right, you know, double check the drawings, you know, stuff like that, 
and you make less, less mistakes, you earn more money. So that's why I'm doing it this way. <laughs> and with the corner building, you know, I've, I've, I've found, you know, with these bricks, uh, the concrete bricks, that, that a lot of these jobs that are near my house are all, con a lot of these advanced sites I'm working on that, that are all within like 10, 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, they're all within 30 minutes, if, clo if not closer, all are concrete bricks. <coughs> In my area, they're all concrete bricks, and I like building these houses because they're easy. They're easy, there's nothing, uh, you know, to me that screams that you're not going to make money other than these other than these other than these materials but you know I've shown multiple times you can lay seven eight hundred of these in a day with the right setup you know it takes a little bit more effort you know um, the heavier but I think I've cracked it with these corners you know profiles are all right profiles are good I'm gonna be using um, not profiles in a traditional sense I'm gonna be um, strapping uh, my four foot levels to the reveals when building the back and front um, but that's it, I'm not putting the profiles up, you know, I'm doing things a little bit more slowly with these this time, you know, I was used to be taking up gables in, uh, to full height in one day, now I'm dropping back, building some corners, moving around, because I had some problems on the last site with the bricks sinking, it was the time of year, it was wet, and, you know, with profiles, you can't always keep an eye on things, whereas, if, you know, with a, you know, with a, with a corner, you've always got your level up it, you're always checking, you're running a few course, and after you've done, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten course, you can put your level back up to start a corner. And if that's, you know, if you see your gable starting to lean a bit, you know, you can really easily straighten it back up, you know, uh, keep on top of everything, especially as well with block work. You know, I'm doing the block work first as well. That helps a big portion as well, keeping your, you know, your brickwork, you know, um, in check. Your brickwork's always backed up to something. The ties really give it a bit of stability as well. And that's probably a bonus, you know, doing brick uh, block work first on these concrete bricks. You give something for your your bricks to rest against. You know, there's some you know some weight behind your bricks. You know, stabilizing it. Even though it's just a few ties set into the wall, it can make a massive difference. So that's why I'm doing it uh, this way. I found block work works a lot better this way uh, as well. I I do prefer to build corners as well with block work. You can you can strap the profiles on. I've done it n numerous times. But same again with the wind, keeping on profiles loading up you know you've got to load up long flanks when you're doing profiles and and i'm at the moment i'm finding it easier just to load out little bits in front um with mel with me actually i'm gonna load out too much you know i'm not gonna load out too much at once we can just work his way around the house nice and easy uh and you know i find when i'm building corners i'm faster running in i'm faster running in um, I'm a better, I'm a better bricklayer. I can build things faster just because I've got more use to using the level, more using the eye. That feel when you press a brick down freehand, you just, you're just developing a different sort of skill than when you just solely work into a line. Um, and as well, I can roll up to site, start laying. I ain't gonna start setting profiles up. You know, start laying straight away. I know all, the, you know, like theoretically, you know, it isn't faster sometimes doing that, but you know. The 50, 100 bricks a day that I might be sacrificing not using profiles, you know, I keep my head clear throughout a day and I find it a lot easier. Um, as you can see here, these first two courts I'm laying, I'm using, I said I wasn't going to do any of this six foot level work, but I'm going to do some um, because it was so windy. I didn't want to take up a little corner. I wanted to just, as you can see, we had nothing loaded in front. We just had this pack of bricks on the corner. So I said, fuck it, I'm getting the big level out. I'm going to build a big tail out. Nine cut nine bricks out one way, and then it was like seven the other, and this will get me all the way to all the way to um, about eighteen course once I finish this corner, and then I'll and then when and then I'll set back at the other side. Uh, I'll probably do a you know like a twelve course with a, you know six out one side, you know three out the other or whatever, um, and that's a, that's pretty good. You know you could I'd say a twelve course corner you can knock up pretty quick when you start getting really big. You know it's spent you know you spend a lot of time but. As you can see, I, because I knew uh, with the time it was, I knew I didn't have time to, you know, start another corner. So I thought I'll make this one bigger. So I take more of that. I take more of that meat out of the wall. You see, you know, you, you build yourself a base when you're building the corner. You, you know, you, you knock out a lot of that awkward bit of the the house. You know, tailing out the back, plumb points. When you, especially with these concrete bricks, you've got to build them in piecemeal. You've got to really make sure that everything. You know, you're doing everything, you know, like 12 course at a time just because I've done it trying to take up in one go and it sags and it sinks and you just, 
only takes someone to start putting the level up your work and then pff, fucking hell it's you know it's curtains from there you know you've got to change the way you do it uh this way i know everything runs nice and true i ain't got to stress about it you know it, you know the top four course belly in because i'm just try try to take it up too quick in one go stuff like that so uh really 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 good really good tactic as well for for the uh, for these concrete bricks if you've never laid them before um you know it's like laying a staffordshire blue or an engineering um you but they're a, they're a little bit more forgiving with the sizes the size is a little bit more uniform with them you know you can't really make you can't really smudge them as well that's one thing with these yellow bricks you can't smudge them the red ones will smudge so that's a downside of them but these yellows you know they don't smudge at all so that's a that's a plus of these yellow concretes but a lot of places use the yellow concretes and the, i laid them about seven years ago and i found them all right to lay back then um, they're probably the best version of a concrete brick to lay um so yeah um what else was I going to mention? What else was I going to mention? Um, yeah, as well. Um, one thing that I'd like to do here, you know, with the corners, because these have a double damp. Um, you know, it's a damp on your on your first course of bricks, and you're putting a course on, and then another course with your air brick sat in, and then another damp over the top, obviously where I've left my trays out as well. And that double damp, you know, when you've got profiles to set up and stuff, it's a real ball ache, you know messing around putting your wee poles in uh, for that first two course that first two three course goes really slow whereas if you knock a lot of it out of the corner you know it speeds you up overall and i can i find you just get a real you know the house seems to take shape easier everything goes up without any hassle um i don't know as, as one brick layer and a laborer or one brick layer and a helper should i call mel she's not laborer it's a lot easier to tackle the house this way and um you know once you've you know once you you've finished building that corner you don't have to touch it it's perfect fit you know corner block on fits bricks um whereas as a profile you're taking profiles off pointing i left so much pointing using profiles especially you know obviously i'm using the uh aluminiums there ain't enough space on these plots for blakes and i don't have any um but you know i imagine if you did have any you wouldn't be using them uh and you know you ain't gonna go back to that you know that corner is completely built completely sorted you know no mess in there, um, no returning to that. And that's my other mentality about building corners, and you know I like it. You know I like doing it. Shows a bit of skill as well. You know guys who you know you see you see a lot of gangs set, setting up profiles, and as soon as it comes to the in and out bit in and out bit of the house, you know they slow down to a halt or it gets to some small little pillars on the back and the front. They're going at a snail's pace, whereas you know you consistently build corners using a level nothing slows you down you know you you gain speed every every area of the house and that's the main thing you know uh you want to be building the fucking gables the back and the front all at the same speed you want to be you know your lane speed doesn't want to change you want to be getting the same meterage in on the back pillars and the front pillars of the house as you are on the gables i know it don't always work that way but if you can you can try and aim for that for, to to increase your skill in that way and it, you know a lot of, there's guys on YouTube like the traditional Bricky doing doing his videos. You know, he has a very eh, very sort of narrow minded old school way of doing things where there's things you can improve. You know, if you do, if you build your corners with you know, using little stop ends like hooking a level up to the end and taking away a plumb point, that's advantageous. There's nothing wrong, that's still free hand in my eyes. If you're if you're putting a little, le you know, uh, f clamp in a level to one of your pump points, you're still taking away, you know, uh, you know, something that can basically drift out of plumb. Um, if you're using pick and dip to, you know, or front tip or putting no grooves in your spread to make it quicker building your corners, you know, stuff like that. I know traditional bricky, you know, deal, the uh, deal, Dean Neil or whatever his name is, you know, he's like old school do this do that use your eyes stuff like that and a lot of the time you know that, that stuff does work you know using your eye but you know the, the guy uses the best materials when you're using stuff like these concrete bricks you know you, you've got to um you got to, you've got to do things differently you got to do things differently when you're on site like this as well uh when you've got damps all over you got air bricks you got you know uh you know other sailing courses to fucking throw you off and stuff like that you know 
you haven't always got the best gear. You've got wet gear sometimes. You've got to do things a little bit different. Um, so, yeah, a lot of the points of his videos is the traditional bricky. You know, the... Uh, they have, uh, you know, they hold a lot of merit, you know, they, he has a lot of good points. Um, but you can do things a little bit. You can use a few new school methods like I'm doing as well. You can mix, you know, do a hybrid of both. You know, I'm doing sort of hybrid of, you know, the new school and the old school. You know, still keeping that, you know, emphasising that speed when you're building corners and also emphasising that speed when you're running in. You know, I'm not going to start laying traditional when I'm running in when I can just pick and dip and do it, you know, three times as quick, you know, so be quick at building corners and be quick running in, you know, build your corners quick, pick and dip, you know, smash your, uh, smash your, your meat in quick as well, you know, double, double bubble in a sense, you know, uh, just because I'm building corners, don't mind I'm going to stop ever doing pick and dip, it's just too quick and too easy to, you know, to, uh, you know, and as well, getting your boards, you know, at waist height, getting your bricks stacked at waist height, it's, um, it's massive, it's a massive, uh, Massive advantage, you know, guys are just they're stuck in their old ways, putting the board on top of one block. Why not two? Why not three blocks high? You know, but yeah. Anyway, so that's the, the video. You see me, um, you know, that's the voiceover, should I say. You see me, how I'm doing the corner. I didn't stress too much on leveling that first course, per first two course perfect because it's such a long tail out. A variation in like a couple of mil in leveling, a big deal. So, don't always stress when you're building corners. This is going to sound rough as fuck, but don't always stress about keeping them level, you know. Get them within a few mil and then get them on the next one. Get it on the next one. And higher and higher you go up, you want to be more and more tight with that level. Um, you always got to keep it plumb. Um, I always plumb every course. You know, you can range it down to your first course sometimes, but you sometimes can be throwing yourself off if that, you know, what one brick's in, one brick's out in the footing. But, you know, um, you know, don't sweat your level too much. Just make sure it's plumb and higher you get up you know just make, if you as long as you gauge on your corners and you've got a consistent 10 mil joint you're not going to be far out of level um you just got to keep an eye on it you know don't don't i don't want to see like that fucking bubble disappearing behind the lines you know if it's touching the line no worries um you know next try on the next course try and get it even more perfect is you and then you can you just know what you what you can get away with what looks good as well sometimes a nice looking wall isn't going to be perfectly level, but you know the higher and higher you get up that corner, it's going to be you know nice, you know nicer and nicer, and you know and that's just little things, little things, just like instincts as well when you're laying. Little things, if it looks right, it's right. You know you've got to sometimes use that analogy. You've got to stand back at your work, and before I finish as well, which has made you know my corner building, um, you know a lot faster over the t over the time using. Um, before you put your level on to range your face work, use your eye to make sure those bricks are, you know, aris to aris to aris, you know, uh, face aris to face aris. I always use my eye first, and normally I'm putting the level on, I'm doing minimal movement. I try not to tap the level back because then you knock your bricks, so you just plumbed out of line. So, you know, that then you just, you basically, then you, you, you're setting yourself up for a curved corner. That's a constant, that's the thing what people do. They, plumb one side, plumb the other, and then they tap the middle, and it doesn't move, and then their end bricks go in, and the middle goes in as well, and they've just sent the wall in a more plumb curve, so you know, you end up having, like, your wall looks belly, and always look at your face as well, keep them face, face joints flush, you know, make sure it's running nice and flush, those, those perps and those beds, and then put your level on, then range it through, um, you just you just learn to become a faster faster bricklayer a more uh, accurate bricklayer over time by doing stuff like that you know um, I'm trying to explain it in the new schoolish way as possible you know uh, more comprehensive as well you know that's gonna uh, that's gonna apply to more sort of areas of brickwork so yeah this is just me building the back back and gable uh, you know as you can see you got the damps you know all, all stuff that to get to get in your way but you know, you can see with, with this little bit of level work, I'm knocking a lot of it out, knocking a lot of the awkwardness out. Handful of wee poles, handful of, you know, air brick vents. You know, we're not, we've knocked out something that, you know, could con be considered a fiddly damp detail. Um, now has become a little bit easier because we're knocking out, knocking it out in chunks. You know, we're splitting into three and so knocking out in one big course with a profile. I find it a lot more effective. Um... So yeah, I'm going to speed the next few of the, these few clips up. 
uh, do a bit of a time lapse and I'll come to you at the end of the video and I'll uh, interject with a bit of bit of uh, you know raw footage. Uh, it was very windy, so you might not be able to hear much. So anyway, guys, um, thanks for listening to this voiceover part of the video. Um, the last couple of videos are amazing. Um, well, you, if you if you made it this far, I know a few a few of you will because there's about two thousand of you who watch this video. I know someone's gonna make it to like the twenty minute mark. So you know if you've got this far, just 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 swipe your finger down and just press the like button for us. See if we can get you know sixty likes again. We we almost got there last time. Let's try sixty or sixty five. Try smash those likes to get the videos out there. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate your time as always. And um, I'll see you in a few days with a video. Right, I'll see you in the next clips.
<laughs> well, <laughs> I'm gonna name today's video I got blown off on sight. <laughs> sure. Shall I name it that? Hold on. Yeah. TV. I've just got one thing to do, one bed to do. On pillar. Treat me boxes. You mean one bed? I've just noticed there's our brush. Alright. Oh, it's not good enough anyway. Alright, no worries. That wind doesn't taste my breath. It does mine as well. Yeah, I've just got, I've got one, three, six, just one, one more I'm missing, that's it. Fuck it, I'll just call it a day this one. Got got one more blues to put on it more on next time I come to this, but there's something to build. Yeah they do, they give up a bully in now, don't they? Yeah, you done there. Is it going to rain tomorrow? Check the uh, weather forecast. Is it going to rain tomorrow? <coughs> no, it's going to rain. So alright, I don't have to cover the bricks up then. Beautiful. Well, not beautiful, it's your it's birthday with It's Sunday?
So just a little quick um, check in with this. Um, I've been when I point these when they're wet, top and tail them. You're in the wet bricks. You've better got a top and tail any wet brick. But these concrete bricks, especially, and I'm using a horsehair brush. They're expensive. The dear no brick layer wants to buy one because they're a fucking. It's 18 quid I paid on Amazon for this Bond Tools horsehair soft brush. Um, you know, but it makes a fantastic job of this brickwork. And the concrete bricks are infamous for you struggling to make a good job without brushing the joint off. It makes a fantastic job. You ain't got to stress. Just slightly brush this over it, and it makes a good job. So it's a little public service announcement there. Shorts. Bond tools. Like them Best hairbrush. Facebook people, do you know what I mean? Shorts, that's right, fucking hell. Yeah, I'll get all this cleaned up then. So, it's uh, Tuesday. That's what we got done. It's a bit windy, you probably won't be able to hear me. Two corners up, run this in. Around here. We got this seven course. Oh, Eight course. Run that in tomorrow. Start on this side. Part of it tomorrow. Right, see you in the next clip. Yeah, yeah, go down that way. Yeah, so that was the um, that was Monday, Tuesday. Oh, fucking hell, sorry, Mel. Sorry, Fucking hell. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry, darling. This is why I don't drive. <laughs> right, yeah, so... Um, I can't remember where we got to. What I've shown you, but... Uh, about 400 brick down today. Not bad for like a 9 o'clock arrival. Having to nip to that other job. Um, found enough telescopes. But... Yeah, really windy today, couldn't really run in more than that six course and filled in where I left out from the other one. Um, it's just windy, it blows the line, you can't really get a good reading when you're running in, so... Um, I whacked up one big corner, two small corners, so that'll be ready to finish that gable tomorrow. Um, build another corner on the other side, running that gable. Um, if I could get halfway up the gable tomorrow, I'll be happy. And uh, probably Thursday, finish, probably Thursday, finish that gable and then drop on the back. So, and I'm having Friday off, so <coughs> nice short week. We're probably looking, I reckon, Wednesday I'll be done, mate. About Wednesday, she'll be done next week, so it'll be a pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good build. Like considering we're doing all free and a few solo days, Mel's just been taking it steady, helping me out. She's not my labourer, as a lot of few people have come say. No, she's not my labourer. She just helps me out. She loads out with me, gets gobbo, points up, basically does all my pointing. She's not like a labourer in the traditional sense of just getting gear all day. Wiping your butt. Wiping me out, I suppose. <laughs> right, right. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching.